A good friend and a fellow YouTuber, Matti Sulanto, made a very interesting video where he was talking about his uh, philosophy of photography and image editing. That video was very inspirational, so I thought that well, maybe I will make my own thoughts on my philosophy. Let's start. Hi there, my name is Peter Forsgaard and I am an Olympus visionary and a professional photographer from Helsinki, Finland. And before we start talking about the philosophy of uh, my photography and editing, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit that bell so you get notified when there is a new video online. My channel is all about you getting to be a better photographer and of course about Olympus gear. But let's start. I will link to Matti's video in the end of this video. So. You have a chance to watch it if you haven't seen it already. It's a really interesting video and as I said it was an inspiration to my video. I'm not commenting what he said because he was talking about his personal uh, feeling and views about photography and you know when you're talking about your own feelings then you cannot be wrong. My feelings and thoughts are a bit different but it doesn't matter because the best thing about photography is that there are so many ways we can do it and so is image editing. Let's start with image editing. I think it's up to everyone themselves if they want to edit their images or not. It's a personal uh, decision. My personal view is that every photograph needs to be edited. You need to boost up the colors, you need to add some contrast and that's because a digital camera does not record the view the way your eye sees it. The way camera sees it is a bit different from your eye. It's always going to be different. We have a better uh, dynamic range in our eye than cameras. So in that sense we need to uh, edit images if we want them to be exactly the way we saw the situation. And it's, has, it's always been like that. If you have made images in a darkroom you know that how much image editing it takes. Very seldom did you make an image just to uh, give light to the paper uh, evenly to every part of the image. You wanted to have some parts of the image a bit more light and some a bit less. And that's exactly the same thing we do in digital image editing. To make the image look the way we saw it. But that's not the only way. We can also talk about how we feel and that's a bit different. For me editing is more about uh, making the image look the way I felt when I took the image. And that's a bit different from uh, what I saw. I might see a thing and then I might feel something about it or my feeling towards it is something or the whole uh, thing or the whole reason that I saw something was because of my mood, my feeling at that particular moment. And I think that's my uh, main thing what drives me to do editing a certain way. And that's why sometimes I edit my images really bright colors and sometimes I do black and white and make the images a bit M more moody or more uh, melancholy and more sad. I've talked about that in this video. A good example of that is uh, last spring when everything was quite normal. Uh, I had a trip to London on February and another trip to Sofia, Bulgaria in the beginning of March. And those images from those trips are totally different. I spent three days in both and uh, the images that I took in London were really colorful and really joyful and I even edited them to be more colorful than they actually were because that was the feeling that that was the way I felt when I saw the scenes that I took and then in Bulgaria a couple of weeks later the images were totally different totally different because the mood was totally different the pandemia has already or had already spread a bit and when we arrived to Sofia airport the first thing we saw was these uh, people medical personnel with uh, full you know protective suits and masks and everything and they picked people randomly to coronavirus tests and then because that was the mood and that was the situation on that particular trip I took images in black and white of course I was traveling it was fun there is some bright white in most of those images. I make them really contrasty. That was the way I felt. It was, a, it was a totally different feeling towards the images and not what I saw. That wasn't the thing. For example, this image of a crow, I think it is. It has nothing to do with uh, Sofia or Bulgaria. It was about my feeling and 
this would have even been better if I had taken or seen a raven, a black raven. That would have been totally cool. That would have uh, really made the mood on this photograph. As you see, the editing is towards that feeling and mood that I had. And then this is another example of mood. It's not the subject or what I saw, but what I felt. And these images are not, I wouldn't consider these to be really great images, but uh, in a way, for me, these images are really important because I remember feeling a bit sad when I was taking these images. I don't remember why, but it was just something. It, it, it isn't the, the trees or the leaves that I saw. It's, it's more like about the feeling and the mood. But I, I think you get the point that what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that uh, it's not always the subject or, or what I saw, but it is about the feeling. Did I already say that it is about the feeling? And before we talk about manipulation, let's talk a bit more about editing. For me also, editing is something that if I want to tell a story with an image or tell something about an image, I will edit it towards the way that I guide the viewer's eye to the subject, which will be the most important thing in that photograph and the reason why I took it. When we're talking about not that much about the mood, but about the image itself is when it's something that I, what I saw. Because, because there are a certain way of seeing. We, first of all, we see things that are more bright than others, so that there is a contrast. Also, we see things that are sharp. So I might darken edges of an image or brighten the, 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 the middle or this around the subject so that I would lead the eye of the viewer to that particular place. Because that is an image, if I want to tell something to you, then I will do that. Of course, for my own images, for myself, I might do a bit different because it's more about the mood. And when I talk about photographing for myself, I mean uh, my leisure photography when I do it for fun. And then, of course, it's a different thing when you do it for clients because then you need to consider what the client wants. But that's a totally different story. I'm not talking about those images in this video. And then image manipulation, which I consider to be images that uh, something has been taken out or added and that's cloning or composing to uh, or making a uh, an image that has uh, added elements from other images that's manipulation for me and nothing wrong with manipulation in my opinion as long as you admit that it's been manipulated so of course it's a different thing if you say that, uh, that something is real if you've changed the sky and, and claim it that it's real then i don't think it's okay if you've changed the sky and say say that that's the way you wanted it, fine, no problem with that. And uh, also with me, I won't hesitate to uh, clone out something that is distracting in the image. Of course, I try to make the image in the first place so that there are no distracting things that needs to be moved. But sometimes there might be something that is distracting. Sometimes if I take a street, street photograph, I might clone out a uh, traffic sign. Yeah, I. I might do that because it might be a distracting. It won't change the feeling that I have or it won't change the image. I think it can make it even better when we can concentrate on the thing of the image and the, and the distracting traffic sign might be pulling away attention from the subject. I don't think nothing wrong with that because the goal is to tell a story and if the image without the traffic sign tells the story better, then just clone it out, no problem. And so far I've talked a, quite a bit about uh, the process of making the image, the actual time when you click the shutter, what is your feeling, what do you see? But that doesn't have to be like that. The image can come together in editing too, in manipulation too. You might combine different things to express the mood. You might make a collage or another composite image that tells a bigger story or has elements of different things that you felt and saw during your trip, for example. And nothing wrong with that, making some art with the images. And I've done that. I've had exhibitions here in Helsinki. A couple, of, I think I have three or four way back 10, 15 years ago when I used to do more art photography. And uh, I had one exhibition that where the only thing that matters was something that was visually uh, pleasing. It's, it didn't have any documentary value. It didn't have any uh, feeling when making the image, it didn't have any info or anything. It was just trying to be a pleasing image that was made for 
an image that is nice to look at. And I think that's totally fine. And this image is an example that, that I still have a print. Maybe it's not one of the best ones because I still have it, I haven't sold it. And with images like this, the whole feeling of the photograph comes from the photograph itself, not the uh, actual making of the photograph. And the reason that photography is such a great thing is that it can be practiced in so many ways, as you probably know already. And there's no right or wrong way of making photographs. There's only your way. And if you are happy with the image that you make for yourselves, then the image is really good. And then, of course, if you make it for a client, it matters what the client says. And remember, like Ansel Adams, a very famous American landscape photographer, once said, there's always two persons in a photograph, the photographer and the viewer. And when you're making the images yourself, you are those, both of those two persons. You are the photographer and you are the viewer. If you have an image that is intended to please others, then remember that there's phot photographer and the viewer who is not you. I think Ansel Adams has a point in that. What are your thoughts on photography and why do you make images? Do you have different uh, purposes or do you only photograph for yourself? And here is the video that Matti made that I was uh, inspired by and t was talking about in the beginning of this video. If you haven't seen it yet, go and watch it. But hey, thanks for watching and bye for now.